For those of you out there who think I do way too many platformers for this series, here is Esper Dream 2, an action RPG by Konami released in 1992, the sequel to Esper Dream that was released on the Famicom Disk System five years prior. The previous game was also an action RPG in the same vein, but the follow-up improves all aspects, making it a great sequel. The word Esper is really ESP-er, someone who has ESP, extrasensory perception, or in common tongue, someone who is psychic. When I first encountered this word in Final Fantasy VI, I thought it was a completely original word made up for that game, but how wrong I was. Both games are about kids with ESP who get transported into the world of books to help them out with their book world ending troubles. Making these games come across as one of those things that were made to entice children to read more books, like Reading Rainbow, Never Ending Story or The Page Master. Anyway, in the first game you get pulled into a world in a similar manner to Doki Doki Panic actually, and that world acts like a hub world for stages. But in the sequel you get access to five bookcases right away, and can choose between them for convenience. For example, the first book world has you retrieve the holy lighthouse light from a sea dragon to bring peace back to a seaside town. The story is pretty basic, but alright, and you typically get paired up with one of the book world's characters, which means that they'll also assist you in battles. Randomly, but it's still nice. When you walk around you will see footsteps moving around, and if you walk into these, you move to a battle screen where you can see the enemies and fight them. You can walk around in all directions, but you can only attack in four. You start out with a bow. It was a water gun in the original, but in the towns you can buy new weapons like the boomerang or find them in dungeons like the bazooka, which still just looks like a gun, but it sounds cool. As you fight enemies you get experience and eventually you level up, of course. You get higher stats, HP and ESP meters grow, the latter acts as your magic meter and you'll pick up more ESP powers to use as the game goes on. But you start with a power to warp back to the library from the beginning. As I played the game I felt that the battles were fun but slightly slow moving, and the walking speed was just as slow and RPG-like. But in the menu I saw an option for speed, which I automatically thought was for message speed, which it usually is in games like this. But no, it actually speeds up the whole game pretty much, and I would definitely recommend cranking it up, because the game becomes that much more enjoyable to play with some speed. The graphics are good, sometimes they feel a bit standard, and other times advanced, like the screen wave effect while underwater. I don't think I've ever seen that in another NES game. The large cartridge isn't just for show, it houses the special Konami developed VRC6 chip, which allows for better graphics and improved sound quality, which you can hear in the music, although the melodies themselves aren't the best that Konami ever made. If you're going to play one of the two Esper Dream games, I would definitely recommend the sequel over the original, as it does everything better, although the original does deserve praise too. But not being able to move in all directions, having the screen change every time you walk into a character, and the constant disc flipping gets annoying over time. Esper Dream 2 might not reach spectacular heights, but it doesn't have any obvious shortcomings really either. It's a pleasant game that should be enjoyed by more people.